Hello. Um, thanks very much for letting me do this. I do have to say, um, maybe people agree that this has been quite a, cath a cathartic experience for me, um, sort of revisiting your career. And as such, I had to put something on paper. But it, it's really helped me think um, because the big thing for me is I, I, I didn't map my career out. Um, I didn't fall into it. But as a kind of young person, my influence was holidaying in this country and we used to get taken around castles, up hill forts, over moors. And so I always had a massive interest in history and I wanted to be an archaeologist. And this was before Indiana Jones, so nobody say that. Um, so in school, I really loved history. Um, I did something called O-levels. I have no idea if they're still around, but I had a really broad mix of arts and sciences. Um, I did physics. Uh, maths and biology, to my great surprise, I enjoyed physics and uh, that was the most difficult. Um, yeah, really weird. I am not a science person. Um, that is never my comfort zone. So as a child, um, I expressed an interest in this. Um, my parents said, oh, yeah. I joined something called Young Rescue, which is now the Young Archaeologist Club. And that was a real way in for me. I was about 10, get all the newsletters, all the news, a chance to go on holiday with Young Archaeologists Club. And I, I thought, wow, first time I went away from home myself was with the Young Archaeologists Club to a holiday in Cumbria. And some of those people are incredibly influential, as I'll share a little bit later uh, as I move through my teen years and even my um, early 20s. Um, so at uh, A-level, um, I did English history and French. But my motivation was always to try and get to university to do archaeology degree because at the time I thought well, it seemed to be the only way to advance or get into the profession was to have a degree in archaeology. Um, so before that I was thinking right I want to go in the field so I did volunteering in school holidays and the person that helped me was the um, Council of British Archaeology education officer who they had at the time I'm not sure if that post is still there, but that's a very important post. And he used to um, advocate that young archaeology club members went to dig at rocks to Roman city in Shropshire. So I went there at the age of 16. Again, wow, introduced to hippies. Uh, and and I, I laugh and joke, but a lot of students were all, all on those excavations of Phil Barker um, and Graham, I forget. But I learned from them because they were the first or second year at university. So they shared experience with me. Some of them taught me to excavate. They'd only done it once themselves. But I was in a quite a learning environment. And it was very exciting as a young person to look up to these people, engage in what I thought was going to be a good lifestyle in a tent, in a field, um, in the sunshine. And so that was my motivation. I really wanted to do something practical um, and in the field. Uh, Fortunately or unfortunately, unfortunately, sort of at the time, my motivation for going to university was twofold between choosing a place I was comfortable with, I was happy, with, I wanted to go and live there, and also the course, and it was a bit of a balance. And now I look back, I think, did I follow my boyfriend at the time? No, he followed me. I wanted to go to Liverpool and do history uh, and archaeology, and I was offered a place, but he eventually got in architecture and I failed to get the right grades to do the course in Liverpool. But again, maybe sort of personal motivations with family issues as well at the time. I thought, I'm going to Liverpool. My dad lives there. I love the place. I found the next base place I could get to in Liverpool that had a mixture of sort of history. And I ended up doing um, a BA in history and English. But before I even started the course, I went digging on Hadrian's Wall. So for me, I thought, right, I'm still going digging when I've got a chance. And this is kind of resonating a little bit with <laughs> something that Vicky said. Um, so I suppose it was a disappointment, but, but at the time, I just thought, right, I'm still going to do archaeology. Um, I was incredibly lucky in my uh, undergraduate course, which is basically a teaching college that did BA ons as well. Um, I had a tutor that was really well integrated in the local archaeology scene. And she introduced me to um, the local field unit and the Archaeology Society. And again, a link I didn't realise, Merseyside. So I was living in Liverpool and I just 
expressed an interest and a tutor was really influential and helpful to me. She really helped. So whilst I was doing a course in English history, I was also volunteering with a local unit. I was documenting pits of pottery, incorrectly, washing things, um, working on a, um, a database for those that remember something called DBase3. It was an early precursor to historic environment records, SMRs. So I got a bit of a flavor of all sorts of things. Um, so I knew that when I finished my degree in English history, I wanted to get a job. So for me, it was about learning and earning. My motivation was, okay, I do need to earn. I don't want to do a PhD. I had a topic I was really passionate about um, in the fifth to the ninth centuries, which is something I studied. But I thought, no, I, I really want to, I need to get a job. I don't want to do any more studying. Um, that was my motivation. Um, my first job was with um, York Archaeological Trust. And I laugh now, but I think it was great at the time. I got paid £8,000 a year to dig. I thought, brilliant. And I wanted to work in urban areas. I was fascinated by urban areas. Um, so I thought, right, you know, York or London, York, massive excavations. And literally to learn, that was it. But also whilst I was there, 100% uh, digging, I volunteered um, on things like open days and community open days because I realised that, you, you know, we were down quite deep holes with shoring. Who knows? Who cares what we're doing? So the trust were brilliant at, at sharing what they did when they could. So sort of running open days and talking to the public, I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and my again, experience came from the fantastic experience field archaeologists around me. They really helped. I had an employer that was interested in letting you try something new at the time called AutoCAD. Um, so, you know, all, all those issues you were digging, filling in the contact sheets, doing surveying, washing finds, um, learning CAD if you wanted to. Um, and that, that was very important. So I consider I had a good employer. I was lucky. Um, um, throughout the early stages of my career, I think a theme that many people might have is um, moving around the country to find work. It seems great when you're 21. Um, so um, having experienced in the field, I was under the impression, well, I, I thought at the time, I'm not going to get any further in archaeology unless I get my degree. So that first job, I saved money up. And you might laugh now, but I did manage to save enough to do a postgraduate, to live anyway, even on that salary. Um, I used some of my own savings and I borrowed some money. So I thought, right, I want a qualification. I do not want to stay in the field. So I went and did um, put myself through a master's, uh, a postgraduate in archaeological practice at the time very lucky in Birmingham. Um, I was the only person doing the masters at the time, but the local field unit took pity on me. Um, no longer here, Birmingham field unit, um, fantastic diploma courses attached to the university, live projects. Um, you know, in the new world of PPG 16, as it was at the time, there was a lot developing. Um, they adopted me. I still did a masters, but I actually worked on live projects. I will not call it exploitation, I will call it volunteering. And some of the projects I did get paid to work on. So again, that was me trying to keep up some element of practical experience. Um, and my motivation for that was to try and, not just having spent that whole year digging in York, was to get a chance to write reports, do a bit of research. I couldn't do that while I was in the field. So that postgraduate gave me that opportunity. Um, I also got to uh, a volunteer offered to honor sites and monuments record, which was Worcester uh, County Council at the time. Um, and I also, during this period, joined CIFA. And again, that was because Birmingham University were quite heavily involved in early days of CIFA. And um, so I started to help out at conferences. And I was, again, luckily surrounded by people who were quite innovative in working on projects. So I got to do, I think, and I now realize I was um, doing all the dogleg work, but I got to work on the early phase of something called the Rocks to Hinterland project that was down there. So I want to get over the fact that 
I didn't have to do all these volunteering things and I was very fortunate to work on live projects with a business field unit. Um, so my motivation after finishing that postgraduate was, well, um, to earn and practice I've got here. So early it's to learn and earn and earn and practice. So I just needed a job. And ironically, I um, ended up with a seven week contract in Nottinghamshire. <laughs> I came to live in Nottingham for seven weeks. I mean, can you imagine, I can't imagine doing that now. One, because I don't wanna move anywhere for seven weeks for a job, but that's what it was like for me. I'm a bit out of touch what it might be for people just starting out, but you used to have to move around a lot to get a job. It was an, a, a sort of a, a stage of the commercial world emerging for me uh, at the time, uh, late 90s, 2000s, and you know, a lot, a lot of work was taking place. Um, but I didn't want to necessarily go back in the field. However, I was running a project for seven weeks, um, looking at Roman field systems in Nottinghamshire for, for Trenton Peak, archeology. span But at the same time, I'd applied for another short-term contract with Nottingham County Council. Again, you know, seven weeks, thought, oh, well, I'll apply for two jobs, see which one I get. And I got both of them. This is very fortunate. And both in Nottingham, I don't think anybody was cursing too much, but I, I ended up working for Nottinghamshire County Council on an English heritage project. It was a sponsored project to look at scheduled monuments. For those that remember, there was a program um, called the Monuments Protection Program. And I was at a computer with my limited knowledge, uh, assessing pieces of paper, assessing scheduled monuments on pieces of paper to see should they be upgraded, changed, downgraded. But that was a whole new world for me. Um, I was in the world of PPG 16 in a planning department, working for a county archeologist, um, uh, surrounded by very knowledgeable people. And I think one of the most influential people people in my career, I'll be always grateful for them, for as much what they said as what they didn't and how they behaved. And that was a gentleman called Mike Bishop, who used to be the county archeologist in Nottinghamshire. And, you know, people influence you in good and bad ways, but um, I shall never forget that person fighting for archeology span and negotiating with developers. This is kind of early days, you know, when this stuff was quite new. Um, and that, that stuck with me, and I thought I quite like this idea of negotiating, but being quite pleased when you've got one over on them. And, you know, and that whole issue about working with maps, working with data, seeing how the process emerges initially from people asking for work. So I got attracted to this planning local government side. And again, um, it was a fixed term contract. Uh, uh, I managed, they managed to keep me on a little bit longer, but it came a point where I thought, right, two motivations, I need a job. I want to move back north. Um, my uh, family and uh, uh, interest areas, um, I'm a bit of, let's do more for the north and more for the south person, sorry. Mm -hmm. This is where I am in my current job. Um, and so I really luckily got a job back in Greater Manchester with Norman Redhead. <laughs> um, but it was a project, it was a field unit in a university at the time, um, but also was emerging uh, as a, an advisory service to local government. So again, a contract to work on creating um, really good maps of sites and monuments records on paper overlays um, and adding to a database. So it was a time when it was kind of getting away from the paper and tracing overlays to indicate where sites were right into a digital system. So I worked for over a year there um, on a contract called Unitary Development Plan Archaeological Coordinator, putting SMR sites on maps and giving them to the local authorities. So it's that element of me being interested in <coughs> wanting to push protection of heritage. That, that was my motivation and, and learn about the planning system. Um, I sort of moved and back have been sort of living mostly in Liverpool since then. And I suppose to, to learn, every time I've wanted to learn something, there's been quite a lot of occasions when I've had to do that outside my day job because, because either I got frustrated or I got passionate about something where I lived. I got passionate about the destruction or decay of um, 
uh, a Victorian palm house building in a local park. So I joined a campaign in my spare time and spent 10 years on that campaign rejuvenating a building. But trying to get over is I learned a lot about lottery funding, um, uh, plants, uh, structure building, all that. And I, I brought that back into my job because I was um, then um, fortunate enough to get a job back as the local archaeology advisor in Merseyside. And I spent quite a lot of my career doing that. And again, it was the prospect of more a contract more than six months, which led me to jump. And it was in my local area. So I went to work in a national museum. Um, very, very peculiar way for a local archaeology planning service to be run. But again, the motivation was to learn and develop and have a chance to run a service. Um, some people caught, saw it as an opportunity I did. Maybe I was naive and young, but provided a service as one person on an HER and planning service for about 19 years. And my motivations for staying were because fantastic archaeology, nobody knew anything about. I wanted to try and get things moving. I wanted to try and develop a record. Um, I was lucky enough to work on some very large scale projects. So I stayed. Situations were like this in terms of contracts. I didn't have a permanent job all the time. I spent about half of it under fixed term contracts. Um, to help, again, I think this is something Vicky said, to, out of frustration to want to learn how developers speak, I did a master's in urban renewal. Because at the time, there was lots of regeneration going on in Merseyside and Northwest. And I had to persuade people to do archaeological work, not just the planning authorities who I worked with while I was working through an MSc in urban renewal. Again, new skills, social skills, economic skills, regeneration, design, renewal, those things I became really passionate about. And uh, when my service was cut um, and I became, had to become self-employed, I decided to become self-employed because I did not want to work for anybody ever again. Um, it was a really difficult period and anybody who's been through that, massive sense of loss. But if it hadn't been for certain people, even developers who I used to be arguing with, they gave me work and I couldn't see why. But then I realized that people tell you that you have value. Never underestimate your own skills. Um, you do have value um, and bad things happen. But so many people helped me and I looked to other communities. The business community helped me. I had no idea about local business, how to do business. Run. People were fantastic. People outside the archaeological profession and people inside. Um, so as part of this, I did not want to work for myself all the time. I didn't want to work for anybody full time. I did a range of projects as a consultant with people. I took the opportunity to move out of my comfort zone and go to the South, Buckinghamshire. I picked up a fixed term contract um, to uh, be the senior archaeologist for Buckinghamshire County Council. I said, I will never work for anybody else again unless it's a big project with somebody I like. So I applied for a job with HS2 and that, that was again a shock to me. Um, and you know, please talk to me after my motivation for that. But I just thought, wow, what a project. Look at all this archaeology uh, in an area I've just been working in. Um, and as part of that, um, I've continued, luckily enough, my employers are very keen that we do voluntary work, that we give back. I've served on various CFA committees on and off over the years. I'm particularly pleased that my employer lets me um, engage with CFA community archaeology, as we're going to call it now, because Part of my role is to try and understand and encourage people to capacity build for our topic and also engagement and public benefit. And it's very hard on a large infrastructure project to do that. But my motivation for staying with this organization, it's not just about, I'm lucky enough to say this, it's not just about earning, it's about um, my belief that I would like to try and change things. Maybe I'm just a bit daft, but you know, it's, it's more than money. If I can live, um, uh, where I'm, I, I travel a lot for, for work to get to an office, um, but my motivation is I can still see the point of it. <laughs> I can still see the point of the scheme. Um, please talk to me after if you want ideas or, or how we, we work um, to encourage people into apprenticeships and capacity build. But uh, I just want to get over to you. It's not fixed for me. I'm perhaps what you call a, maybe a, a later career person. I, I, I don't like the word, but, uh, but careers are not about age. It just so happens I might be older than a few of you. But the point is, 
I might not have finished. I might want to do something different. I would like ideas from you. I want to learn. I might be out of touch. So the things that are coming through that you're feeling as challenges, they might be really great for me. I, I might want to, you know, do some of those things and learn together. So that's one of my motivations for doing this today as well. If I can help people in any way, I will. Um, but certainly I'll definitely up for learning from you guys. Well, so thanks.